Hi. In this video, I want to quickly talk about Azure Active Directory because there can be certainly some confusion about really what Azure Active Directory actually is. If we think about normal Active Directory as we know it, we think of our on-premises Active Directory services. This could be Active Directory domain services, i.e. domain controllers with a domain I can log on to, I get policy. I think of Active Directory certificate services, Active Directory rights management services. And so when we think of Azure Active Directory, it's very logical to think, well, it, it's just all of that stuff running in the cloud, the public cloud. And that's really not the case. Azure Active Directory really at its core is an identity solution. If I think of my on-premises Active Directory domain services, I have things like Kerberos for authentication. I have LDAP where I can go and actually query and get information. I have organizational units, I have a deep structure, I have group policy objects, I can join that domain. And that all works because on premises, I really have unlimited communications between my machine and those domain controllers. Now let's think about accessing something over the internet. With the internet, I probably can't use any protocol I want. There's firewalls, things will get blocked. So I really want to think about talking over HTTP and more likely HTTPS so it's encrypted. And so I kind of have to change the way I think. So instead of Kerberos for authentication, I think of things like OAuth, I think of SAML, I think of WS Federation. Instead of LDAP, I think of the AD Graph API. And I can't do things like have group policy objects applied to me when I use Azure AD. I can't join my machine to Azure Active Directory. I don't have organizational units. I have a flat structure, I have users, I can have groups but it's primarily an identity solution. So where you can struggle is you'll think, well, why do I want to use this? Really, what is the major benefit in using Azure Active Directory? So I think it's best explained by thinking of what we would do without Azure Active Directory. So I could think that I have my on-premises and I kind of have my Active Directory. And I think about, I have users in my AD. And now my company is doing business with someone else, some other company out there over the internet. And they have their own kind of directory service. And one of the things I could do is for every user, they have some kind of user object over there as well. That's a different user object, maybe a different password. And when someone joins, I have to go and get that created. But I do business with another company. So I have to have another user object and another company, etc, etc, etc. So now when a new user joins my company, I have to think about getting 10, 20, 30 accounts created. Maybe different passwords, or maybe a worst case, the user uses the same password on every single one of those. So if one of those is not very secure, suddenly that intruder has the passwords to that user in every one of these companies. If that user leaves, then I have to deprovision all of these, and very quickly, because maybe I don't want them to have access to those systems anymore. And so we kind of don't want to do this. We don't want our users to have different user objects in every single company we work with. We want to use federation, and this is Active Directory Federation Services, and this is really the idea that I have, for example, a, an ADFS server in my company, and these companies have some kind of federation as well it uses a SAML token that has claims. And the way it works is I don't have separate users anymore in all of these companies. Instead, when my user wants to access a service over there, by using the federation, essentially I, I get a SAML token is sent over with claims about the user that's populated from things like my Active Directory. And they're then basically authenticated and they get access based on this credential. So if I disable this credential, if they leave, they can't access any of those partner companies anymore. So that sounds great. And so I would have to maintain the federation with all of those companies. And as we grow, as we work with more and more partners out there, this actually gets trickier and trickier. The idea of maintaining all these different federations can become very, very problematic. So one of the key things Azure Active Directory does is kind of does that for us. 
The idea now is I, I kind of move away from doing that. What I actually have kind of in the middle is I can think about, actually let's just move this out, shove that over a bit. I can actually think about doing now in the middle is Azure AD. And Azure AD is the one that has federations with all those different partners, 20, 50, reality thousands, thousands of relationships. If I actually go and look, this is my Azure AD in my environment. If I go to my applications and I do add, they have a gallery. So currently 2,417. So Azure AD has federations with 2,417. And it's all the big guys. This is not just Microsoft centric. There's things like Amazon Web Services, Salesforce, the Facebooks, the Twitters, all, all these different things are out there. And so what this now means is that I as a company, I don't have to do that anymore. All I do is I federate once with Azure AD. So my users now essentially have objects in Azure AD that represent them. They authenticate to that, there's an immutable ID that says, hey, yes, you're this person, you're allowed to use this Azure AD credential. And then I, as the administrator of that Azure AD, control well, which applications do I allow them to federate with. I can do things like, well, based on this group membership, I'm automatically gonna enable you access to these groups of applications. So the key benefit Azure AD is kind of doing here is I think about, I just have one federation in my organization. I have an Azure AD identity. And then Azure AD worries about all those relationships with everyone else. And then I as an administrator control which ones I want to enable. And there can be some nice benefits. Imagine I have a corporate Twitter. Well, the users never know what that corporate Twitter password is, for example. But through the federation, I can enable that user to act on behalf, for example, of my corporation. When this user gets disabled, they can't access anything. So it does away with all of that manual federation management that I have to do, and it just does it for me. Now a key point that you may wonder is, okay, that sounds great. How do I get the objects in Azure AD? Essentially what we have is we have an AD sync, an Azure AD synchronization, uh, DER sync. It's kind of been renamed. And really what DER sync does is for my users in my on-premises Active Directory, it synchronizes into Azure AD. So basically it creates an object in Azure AD for each of my users. And in addition to just synchronizing the user object, I can also say we'll synchronize a hash of the password hash. So now they have the same password. So it almost gives the illusion of a kind of single sign-on. When I sign into Azure AD, I use the same username and the same password. It's actually a different identity, but it's kind of linked together. It looks like it has that same password because I can optionally, don't have to, but I can sync that password hash. And that's how I would populate the Azure Active Directory. And I can kind of see that. If I look at my example of my users, you can see I've got a couple here, Alec Trevelyan and James Bond, kind of a 007 thing. But you can see the source from local Active Directory. These were created using that DER sync, the Azure synchronization between my on-premises Active Directory and Azure AD. So it's not like I have to manually go and create these things. It's going to get created automatically. So OK, imagine now I have the objects in Azure AD. So that sounds great. So how does the authentication actually work? I want to go and connect to one of those things federated. And here I really have two choices. I already talked about I could have the password hash synchronized. So essentially it gives the illusion that it's one credential because it's the same password, the same username. But maybe I don't want that. Maybe I don't want the password hash to be sent into Azure AD or maybe just because of regulatory requirements, because of reporting. I want the authentication to actually take place to my on-premises. This synchronization is not ADFS. I actually don't need to use ADFS yet. 
I'm just using dursing to populate the objects. But if I'm willing to go that one step further, then I do use ADFS. I have that federation between Azure AD and my on-premises Active Directory. So when someone tries to log in against Azure AD, what it actually does is it takes the authentication request and will send it back to my on-premises domain controllers. They will perform that authentication, basically send that token, the SAM will confirm yes, and then they're logged on. So it's using the Azure AD identity to then go and talk to all those partner applications the actual authentication took place against my on-premises Active Directory. And I hear there's come times of fear of ADFS. It seems very intimidating. The reality is it's really not that hard, especially if I'm just federating with um, Azure Active Directory. It's actually very simple. There are some ports, there's IP address I need, etc. but it's actually a very simple process to do. And then all my authentication will take place against my on-premises. Uh, a recent update did let us still send a password hash and use the ADFS. Maybe that's there as a, a backup. Most large organizations will leverage ADFS for the authentication. It's just kind of what I've seen. So that, that's kind of the most common one in terms of how they do it. And again, it's got kind of this stigma, but it's really not as bad as it seems. Then once I have this, users can go to a portal. They'll see all those federated apps. They just click it and they're logged on. It's a very, very nice, simple end user experience. Now, Azure AD does do more. It's not just the identity, though. I kind of think of that as that key, huge value prop. There's a active Azure Active Directory Premium that kind of gives me some additional things. It controls how many applications I can federate with. It's unlimited. The free Azure Active Directory I get, I can only have 10 applications. I think it's half a million objects, which is still big, but all those limits go away with the Azure AD Premium. Um, like it was the Enterprise Mobility Suite, EMS. But when I think about the Azure AD Premium, I can do things like, I can reset my password in Azure AD and it will synchronize back to my on-premises. There's things like I get Forefront or now Microsoft Identity Manager to manage your identity on-premises. I get some nice reporting, some of them are free. Some of them get even with the free Azure Active Directory you get just with Office 365 or an Azure subscription or just create them. And I love some of these reports. So if I look at my reports, I can see some sort of logons from unknown sources. Maybe someone's signing in with an IP address that's been anonymized. It's like, well, that's suspicious. Like, I kind of want to know about that. Sign-ins after multiple failures. They've tried to log on, and then eventually they do. I, I can see that in reports. Sign-ins from multiple geographies. So I sign in from London, and then five minutes later, I sign in from New York. That's suspicious, there's not many transports that can allow me to do that, so flag that. Now it may be a known issue, I may remote desktop into a machine in London, for example, so that's fine, I can actually set, hey, this is a known thing, don't worry about it, but it will flag, it will show me those things. Then there's these premium reports we have given the Azure AD Premium. Sign-ins from IP addresses with suspicious activity. So maybe there's been a sustained intrusion attempt. They're trying to get in and it's gonna flag, hey look, logons. Sign in from possibly infected devices. I love this one. How do we know? How can Microsoft possibly know that that device might possibly be infected? There's no statement of health. There's no software running on it. How would it know? So if you think about sort of the Microsoft cyber crimes unit that go and investigate and try and take down these botnets. So when they take down one of those botnets, they can actually get the information about well, who that botnet has infected, who's been communicating. They know those IP addresses now. So they can now flag, hey look, I'm seeing activity from someone that we found on one of those botnets. So we can say, look, it could be infected. You may want to be careful about this. Irregular sign-in activity, it learns your user's sign-in, machine intelligence, to start to understand what's normal. And if it's not normal, well, let, let's flag that. Password resets, um, registration, application usage, you can go and actually do discovery of the applications being used. So a lot of cool things. But primarily, the value proposition I think about when I think of Azure AD is the identity. It's an identity solution. I think about now as an organization, I have one real federation with Azure AD, and now very easily through that sort of catalog I showed, I can just add 
thousands of different applications that I use out on the cloud and I have that one identity. I'm not manually creating 10, 20, 50, 100 federations. I have one. I don't even have to have one. Remember I talked about I could just do sync that way and do a password sync. But ideally, I will do the ADFS back so I can all send a K against here. But essentially, I have one federation and then I can use all those different applications. It's managing my identity for me. So hopefully that kind of helped out where Azure AD fits. I appreciate your time. Thank you.